Hey guys, it's Off by One here, and today we're going to be solving number of connected components in an undirected graph. In this problem, we have a graph of n nodes, and we're given an integer n that tells us how many nodes we have, and they give us an array of edges that tells us which nodes have an edge. So for example, here we have 0, 1, and as you can see in this example here, 0 and 1 have an edge between them. And in the end, they want us to return the number of connected components in the graph. So what does this mean exactly? Well, if you look at our example here, we have two connected components. And as you can see, we have this component here and this component here. And this would be two connected components. What if you had an extra node over here, just five by itself, that's not connected to anything? That still counts as a connected component because we can imagine it pointing to itself like this. And that would mean it's a connected component. So for this example now, it would be three connected components. Okay, now that we understand what the problem is asking us, how can we solve this? My first instinct was to do a DFS for every node from 0 to n minus 1. So for example, I would do DFS on 0, and then I would mark it as visited, and then I would see that 1 is its neighbor, mark that as visited, and same thing with 2. And then when we go to 1, we see that it's already visited, so we will skip that iteration, and for now, we still have just one DFS call. And then we would go to 2, and same thing. It's already visited, so we don't do it for that, so we're still at just one DFS call. And then when we go to 3, we see that it's not visited, so we do a DFS for that. And we would mark 3 is visited, and same thing with 4, and this would be our second DFS call. And then when we go to 4, we see it's already visited, so in the end we would just return that we made two DFS calls, and that tells us how many connected components there are. And while this solution is efficient and does work, there is another solution that involves a data structure that is specifically made for this problem. So that's what I'm going to show you next. The data structure we're going to use is called union find. And this data structure allows us to keep track of the number of components we have in an undirected graph. And depending on how you implement it, it can be used in a variety of ways. For example, you can use it to detect a cycle in an undirected graph, and you can use it to solve some tree problems as well. But here, I'm just going to show you the most efficient implementation for this problem. So the first thing we're going to do is initialize all the nodes to be pointing to themselves. And the reason we're doing that is because we want 0 to be a parent of itself, 1 to be a parent of itself, and so on. And you'll see why this matters in a second. Next, we're going to update the edges between the nodes according to this edges array here. So our first pair of edges is going to be 0 and 1. And what we're going to do here is choose a representative node. And what that means is that whenever we choose a representative node, that is going to be the parent of the whole undirected graph. So let's just choose 0, for example, to show you what I mean. So if 0 is a representative, we want 1 to be connected to 0 and not the other way around. So our connection is going to be like this. And now we're done with this edge here. So this is what our graph looks like now, where 0 is the representative, meaning that 0 is going to be the parent for all of the nodes in this graph. So next, we're going to go through this next edge, 1 and 2. So normally, when you're making a graph, you would connect 2 to 1 like this. But because 0 is the representative node, you want to connect 2 to 0 instead. So our edge would be this. So now this would be our graph and we're done processing this edge here. And as you can see, this is not what our graph is supposed to look like. Really, our graph is supposed to be 0 like this, and then 1, and then 2. But if you think about it, this will take longer to traverse because to find the parent of 2, you have to go to 1, and then to find the parent of 1, you have to go all the way up to 0. And if you have a long chain of these, it would just be very inefficient. So it's more efficient to just take all of the nodes in the same graph and connect them to one node at the top. So that way, at the most, you only have to traverse up one. So hopefully this is starting to make some sense. And now we go to our last edge, which is 3 and 4. So we can just choose a representative node for one of these. Let's just say 3. And then we can connect 4 to that. So our edge is going to be like this. So now we're done going through all the edges and we constructed our graphs. To get the number of components, all we have to do is check how many different parents there are. So what we're going to do is have an array with all of the nodes. And in this array, we're going to store the parent for each node. So index 0 here represents node 0, index 1 represents node 1, index 2 represents node 2, and so on. So for index 0 here, our parent for node 0 is going to be 0, so we're going to fill that in there. Our parent for node 1, as you can see, is 0, so we're going to put that there as well. For 2, same thing, our parent is 0. And then for 3, the parent is itself, as you can see here, it's pointing to itself. So we can say that the parent for 3 is 3. And then for 4, the parent is going to be 3. And you can see that in this array, there are only two different numbers, which is 0 and 3. And those are your two representatives we chose for our graph. So in the end, we can just return 2 
because that is how many different parents we have, meaning that we have two different graphs. There is a small edge case by using this method though. Let's say we had an extra edge and that it was zero and three. Well now we can link three to zero and get rid of this and then update our parent of three to be zero. But we would still have that the parent of four is three. So if we just look at this array here, we would think we have two different graphs. But in reality, it's just one graph. A better way would just be to count how many connections we made. So for example, we started with five different graphs because none of them are connected. And then we connected zero and one. And then from there, we made this edge here, which means that we only had four graphs. And then we made this connection here and that lowered to three. And then after this connection here, we only had two graphs. And let's say we actually had this edge here, zero to three. We would connect three to zero, which would be one more connection, meaning that we only have one graph in total, which is true. And one last thing before we get into the code, I never explained how we're actually going to choose our representative nodes. And it's actually pretty simple. I'm not going to go too in depth with it because I'm going to explain it better in the code. But basically, we're just going to take whatever node already has the most connections on it. And if they're all even, let's say we're at the start, then we're just going to choose the edge on the left. So for example, here, we already had one connected to zero, which is why we connected two to zero instead of one, because zero already had a connection to it. And we're trying to keep our tree as small as possible so we can look up our parent faster. So what we did here is called union find by rank and path compression. So if you remember, the original algorithm's name was union find. And this rank and path compression part just means that we chose a representative node and we also want to keep our layers as small as possible. The time complexity for this algorithm is going to be O of N plus M times log N, where N is the number of nodes and M is the number of edges we have. And this log N comes from trying to find the parent of that edge. So in this case, because we're using path compression, this log N can almost be simplified to O of one. But because there's the worst case scenario of it being log N, we can't do that. Our space complexity for this would just be O of N because we're gonna be using two arrays one to keep track of our parent and one to keep track of our rank and they're both going to be of size n which is just a number of nodes so now let's get into the code so for this problem i'm going to be using some object oriented programming and i just think that makes it easier to read and understand so first we're going to define our class called union find the first thing we want to do is initialize the object and we're only going to be passing in n which is the number of nodes and the things we want to initialize are the parents array the rank array and our count. So our parent array is just going to be equal to all nodes pointing to themselves. So now every single node is pointing to itself like we did in the example. And then next we want to initialize our rank array. And this is going to be equal to one for every node. And all these means right now is that every node only has one node connected to it, which is itself. And then next we're going to initialize our count. And what this is going to do is keep track of how many connections we made. And then in the end is going to return the amount of connected components. So at the moment we have n number of graphs and every node is pointing to itself. And every node has a rank of one because they only have one connection, which is itself. So now that we have our constructor, all we have to do is define two functions. The first is going to be find parent and we're going to be passing in just a node. And then we're also going to define the union function. And for this, we're going to pass node one and node two. Node one and node two here come from our edges list. So if our edge is zero and one, then node one would be zero and node two would be one. So now that we understand that, the first thing we want to do is find the parents of these two nodes. So we want to have two variables, the parent for node one, and we're going to set that equal to find parent of node one, and then parent for node two and we're gonna set that equal to find parent of node two. The reason we want to find its parents is because if the parents are the same, then that means that they're already connected to the same graph. And if they're already connected to the same graph, then we don't need to do the union function because they're already connected. So our next line is gonna be checking that. So if parent of node one is equal to the parent of node two, then that means they're already connected to the graph and we can just exit this function. And before going any further, let me show you how to connect these edges. So for example, let's say our node one was zero and our node two was four. Well, we're gonna find our parent for each of the nodes and the parent for node zero is zero and the parent for node two is going to be three. And as you can see, they're different. So we're not gonna run this if statement here. And instead we want to make a connection between zero and three like this. So we want to connect the parent of four 
to the parent of zero. So for this particular example, we can just say that the parent of the parent of node two is now going to be equal to the parent of node one. So the parent of node two would be three and the parent of node one would be zero. So our three is not going to be connected to zero like this. Okay, but now let's say that this is our graph where three has more connections to it. In this scenario, we would want to do the opposite. We would want to connect node zero to node three. So we would instead say that we want to connect the parent of the parent of node one and make that equal to the parent of node two. And the way to tell which one of these we're going to do is by looking at the rank of the nodes. So if the rank of the parent for node two is greater than the rank of the parent for node one, then we want to do this operation because that would mean that node two has more connections to it. So we can say that if the rank of the parent of node two is greater than the rank of the parent of node one, then we want to do this line. Otherwise, we just do it like this. And one more thing, we want to update the ranks of these nodes. So we want to update the rank of parent of node two, and we want to add the rank of the parent of node one. And same thing over here, just flipped. And before I forget, this is supposed to have a lot of self dots at the beginning of a lot of these. And then at the end, if we do a successful union, then that means we decrease the amount of graphs there are. So we can decrease our count by one. So what this line does is just tells us how many nodes are connected to this new graph. So for example, if we had three here, the rank here would be three because it has a connection to itself, to two and to four. And node zero here would have two connections. So in the end, node three would have five connections because we added the zero rank to it. So we would have one, two, three, four, and itself for five. So that's it for our union function. And now we're going to do our find parent. So we know that our array parent has all the parents for all the nodes. So we could just return self.parent at n. But let's say that we wanted to find the parent of one. Well, if we just did this union here, then that means the parent of one would be listed as zero. And that's not true. The parent of one would have to be three because that's what we want to do when we do our unions again. So we would have to find the parent recursively. So how do we know if we're at the actual parent? Well, we know that the actual parent three only points to itself. So we could say that if n does not equal the parent of n, so if n was three, the parent of three would be three still, and that would be correct. But if it's not, then we want to recursively find the parent. So we could say that self.parent at n is going to be equal to self.findParent and we're going to be passing in our parent of n. So we'll be going up the tree. And that's it for our union find class. So now we can just delete this comment. And in the end, we just want to call our union function. So we can just say uf and call union find. And we pass in our parameter n. Now we just want to iterate through all the edges. So we can say for node one and node two in edges, we want to do our union call. So uf.union, we pass in our nodes. And then at the end, we can just return our count. So this union call here is just building our graph and our count is telling us how many connected components there are. So here's the whole code on the screen and now I'm gonna submit it. And I'm just doing this on some random website that had test cases written out for it already. So as you can see, it did pass all the cases. So now we'll go through the code manually. So I've already initialized the actual union find object and we can just cross off this line since we're done with that. And as you can see, all the nodes are pointing to themselves and the rank of every node is just one. And here I've drawn the graph representation of what we have so far. So let's start. So we're gonna go through every single edge and edges and the first one is going to be zero one. So we're gonna do union on n1 equals zero and n2 equal to one. So the first thing we're going to do is find the parents of each one and they're both just the parent of themselves for now. So this condition is not true. So now we go to this if statement. The ranks are the same. So this if statement is not gonna be true. So we go to our else statement. And in our else statement, we set the parent at index parent two. So the parent of node two would just be one. So we're gonna set one equal to the parent of node one, which is zero. So now we're gonna have an edge going from one to zero. So now we're gonna update the rank of our node zero to be equal to itself, plus the rank of the parent of node two. So we would have one plus one. So now this is a two. And at the end, we decrease our count by one because now we have four graphs. And then now we go to our next edge. So now we're at one, two. 
So n1 is going to be 1, and n2 is going to be 2. And now we do the same thing. So the parent for node 1, which is 1, is going to be 0, because we can see in our parent array, it is 0. And the parent for node 2 is going to be 2, because it's still pointing to itself. And this condition is not met, so we don't do that. And now we check which parent has the bigger rank. And as you can see, 0 has a bigger rank, so we're going to do this else statement. So we're going to set the parent of the parent of node 2 to be equal to the parent of node 1. So parent of node 2 now is going to be the parent of node 1, which is 0. And then we're also going to change the rank to be equal to the current rank of node 0 plus the rank of node 2. So now our rank is going to be 3. And at the end, we decrease our counter by 1. So now we're at 3 because we only have 3 graphs since we just made this connection here. And now we go through our last edge, which is 3, 4. So n1 is going to be 3 and n2 is going to be 4. They're both pointing to themselves as parents. So the parent of node 1 is going to be 3 and the parent for node 2 is going to be 4. So the parents are not equal. So now we check their ranks. The ranks are the same, so we're just going to go to this else statement by default. And now we're going to set our parent at parent of node 2 equal to parent of node 1. So the parent for node 4 is now going to be 3, because that is the parent of our node 1. And then we're going to update the rank for r3 to be equal to itself, plus the rank of node 4. So we would have 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then we decrease our counter again, so now our count is 2. And we have made this connection, which means we only have two graphs now. So now we're done going through our edges, and we can just return the count variable, which is 2. And that is correct. That is the number of connected components we have. If this video helped you in any way, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.